Hi, David. Welcome to the Integrative Health Coach Success Podcast. Thanks, Julia. It's great to be here. Yeah, we're excited to have you. And I'm really looking forward to diving into uh, our topic today because it's something I think we haven't chatted much about uh, at all. And I'm looking forward to hearing your take on it. Uh, So what I would love to do to start is, could you share with our listeners what you're currently doing with your IHP certification? Sure. Yeah. So um, I'm current. I'm a practicing health coach. Um, I'm in transition still, so I still do have my day job. But I'd say I'm at a point where I'm about 60 40. So 60 percent doing um, health coaching and just wellness related activities. And um, my practice consists of three elements. So the first one is kind of the most obvious route, which is I work with clients one on one. And then the second one is doing public speaking and workshops. So that's been something that I've always, you know. I realized that I was passionate about. I'm actually a very introverted person, but actually, but I'm also, you know, passionate and really care about teaching and public speaking. So there's a little bit of a dichotomy there, um, and that was sort of an extension of my YouTube channel. So I was doing um, in 2021, 2022, um, you know, YouTube, and then this was kind of obviously the real life version of that, where I'm in, you know, in front of people. And then the last component is information products. So in particular, um, I've created a course that is basically the, you know kind of focused on like my niche area, which is brain fog and chronic fatigue. And so I've been involved in like creating more informational products. So right now I have one course, I'm going to make kind of something similar or akin to Dr. Cabral's health accelerator. So kind of smaller courses. So Mm -hmm. yeah, so those are kind of the three elements in my practice right now. That's great. Uh, Now, so you mentioned that you um, still kind of have your day job. What were you doing before you got into? Yeah. uh, So, yeah. So my day job is I'm a UX designer. So user experience designer at an HR technology company. And specifically, um, I'm leading a small team that designs coaching products in the HR technology space. So I create um, psychometric assessments to help managers better understand their employees um, and then make decisions. And then we make like analytical tools to predict if people are going to leave their jobs, how to allocate bonuses, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion tools to, uh, you know, kind of balance out any um, pay inequities that exist in an organization. So that's actually becoming a bigger field now. Um, so if let's say, you know, you, you feel that there's, um, you know, pay inequity in your organization and you were to sue them, then now they're legally obliged to actually um, pull out this data that they're collecting. So it's very similar to um, a lot of the data collection privacy. So like the thing it's called the General Data Privacy Act in, in the UK and um, in Europe. So um, yeah, we built a lot of tools for companies like that. And then of course, like performance reviews and onboarding apps. So anything related to managing your talent in a company. And I was in, I've been in that space for about um, four to five years in kind of the coaching HR technology space as a designer. Oh, wow. That's fascinating. It's, it, do you, do you enjoy it? I mean, obviously uh, we both yeah, yeah. Health coaching. Yeah, I do. En- I do enjoy it. I, I consider, I, you know, I love design and, and I feel that, you know, my background in design has actually been very helpful as a coach. Cause I was already by default, more tech savvy. I understood like how to move people through funnels, you know, it's kind of what gets people to, you know, click on copy and things like that. So, and then even how you present wellness plans. Like we did, I, you know, have like more elaborately designed wellness plans because I know that people have limited attention span. So I kind of highlight things and use typography. So, so it has been pretty helpful in many ways. Um, but I would consider, you know, health coaching to be like life purpose and vocational. And then, you know, my design career and being in tech to be more of a career. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're both good. I mean, but this is just like orders of magnitude better. Like, you know, so that's, so, so I have a weird relationship with my day job because I don't have that typical, actually, I have very amicable coworkers. I have a really nice boss. Um, I work with very kind, competent people. So I don't have a lot of resentment towards my day job in the sense that many other people say, oh, I want to leave behind my day job. It's all, it's really toxic and doesn't serve me and then do this. And I certainly do want to go hundred percent into um, health coaching and into the wellness field. However, I, I can't, it wouldn't, it'd be very um, inauthentic to say that I like despise my day job or I don't like those people at all. So, um, you know, like if I were to leave the company, I would, you know, definitely, it would be an emotional experience for sure. So. Sure. Yeah, that's great. I mean, all, all the more um, beautiful of an experience, right? I mean, it, it even lends itself to like your passion of health coaching even more because here you have a career that 
you've been doing for quite a while, you could be comfortable mm -hmm. in, you're not miserable, you know, and you're kind of like, but this is my soul's purpose. And so, totally. you know, yeah, that's awesome. So you mentioned uh, some of the information uh, in the information part of what you do that you have uh, um, brain fog um, type of like, you know, um, I forget what word you used, but I'm curious, do you have a specific niche? Because okay. it sounds like you do. And I would love for you to kind of share what the niche is and kind of how sure. you were able to focus down. Because I think it's something that a lot of coaches just starting out tend to struggle with because mm. we try to think like we want to reach all the people, but give us your take on niching down. Sure. Um, so yeah, I do have a niche. Not all of my clients fall into that niche and mm. nobody seems to mind that. Um, so my niche is brain fog, chronic fatigue, and MTHFR slash methylation issues. They're pretty intertwined. And the reason that I chose that niche was twofold. One, it's because that's that's how my wellness journey started. That's how I got into this field to begin with was, you know, I had debilitating chronic fatigue and brain fog for, you know, I would say really bad for like two to three years. But in retrospect, I had it building for probably five or six years. And so I was going from doctor to doctor from, you know, 2014 or 2013, really, to about 2016, and not really getting any answers. And that's how I got into kind of that's what sparked my interest in functional medicine or alternative healing of all kinds. Um, you know, I, at first I was in the biohacking space and I started out with my niche because it's what I knew the most. It's what I felt confident I could, you know, definitively help people with like, what's your secret sauce? Like, why would they come to me versus somebody else? Well, it's because I've gone through what they've gone through and I can with, you know, some degree of confidence say like, Hey, I think I can definitively help you with this problem better than most other practitioners because I've lived it and I've studied it. Um, I've suffered with it. And I've also researched it in a way that others haven't because I'm just more in, invested in it than in other issues. So that was the, the primary reason. And when I was starting out, when I was doing my IHP level one, I, I started a YouTube channel. I don't know why. Um, I don't exactly remember why I started. It just kind of felt like something I was called to do. I was like, okay, I want to just start teaching. So as I was learning, I was like, well, I can't teach about every single natural health topic, you know, because when you go into IHP, and I've read a lot of other books on, you know, autoimmune and Hashimoto's and nutrition and um, training, and I have a lot of a vast array of interest in the natural health field. But I'm like, okay, well, I can't really, I, I don't know, I, I can't really create a channel um, without feeling inauthentic or a little bit of an imposter. So I'm just going to talk about what I'm, I know really well, which is, you know, I, I started out talking about you know, top causes of brain fog through all the books I've read. Um, you know, in my journey, um, heavy metal toxicity was a big player. So I have MTHFR mutation C677T. So I have the worst combination of it. And then on top of that, I was on a vegan diet. I was living in a polluted city. Um, you know, I had a very poor lifestyle in a multitude of ways. And more importantly, I was not honoring my bioindividuality. So that was kind of the, the main reason that I got sick in the long run. And, um, yeah, I started out with really granular videos. So there's a saying in like when you in YouTube, which is one of the best ways because it's a search engine to um, get ranked videos is to answer specific questions, ASQ. And so I was like, okay, what are some really specific questions I can answer? I went over my labs on YouTube, I would just do screen shares. And I'd be like, hey, this is here's a, a, my, a myotoxin lab. Here's my heavy metal labs. This is like my before and after. This is when I did my chelation protocol, even labs that were like three or four years old. Um, I went through genetic reports to help people identify their MTHFR status. Um, I would go through, you know, my vitamin D labs, things like that. Just talk about the variations of MTHFR, which is like a very niche thing. Like, you know, if you're on Reddit or something like that, there's a lot of people asking, but generally speaking, you know, these aren't like very general, you know, health concerns, I would say. Um, so that was kind of the main thing is because I felt very confident um, helping others, but also teaching about these topics. So that was kind of my starting point um, and how I got momentum. And then, you know, actually most of my clients have come through YouTube, um, especially the first year, um, which I, I know within the health coaching community, a lot of, there's a lot of focus on Instagram because, you know, and, and it's a great tool as well. There's nothing wrong with it, but just my personal experience, YouTube has really been uh, pivotal. And a lot of it has to do with kind of niching down and being very specific um, with the types of things I address, because as a small creator, as or somebody starting out, one of your advantages is your granularity or the specificity. Because if no one's answering the question, there's no competition. 
So for me, like double, triple niching is actually probably one of the best things you could do starting out. Yes. Yeah. And I, I actually haven't done a podcast with anybody who's regretted niching down. <laughs> so yeah, okay. it's everybody who's niched down is like, says exactly what you you know, said, which is that it just, yes, you're answering specific questions for somebody that maybe isn't getting the answers somewhere else, right? Like there's not a lot of guys on YouTube probably talking about the MTHFR gene. Mm -hmm. um, and so I love that point. The other thing that I love that you kind of, you said special sauce and it's topics that you've probably researched at nauseum because it was the way that you were helping yourself get better. But uh, as far as relatability, I feel like there's always that component where you can say to a client, like, listen, I've, I've gone through this. I was here and now I'm on the other side and there's a specific way to get over here and I can help you do that. And I feel like that goes such a long way with that kind of like, like know and trust factor of yeah. a client perceiving, you know, you as the expert, but also somebody that knows what it's like to be in their shoes. Definitely. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right. Uh, all right. So what I would love to chat about next is kind of your take on what it means to have your own um, expectations be separate or maybe not even exist um, from a client's maybe satisfaction and expectation with going through a wellness you know, program or working with you, uh, if, you know, other coaches are listening, what's kind of your take on what your position should be as the coach uh, versus kind of what the client receives from, as far as satisfaction and expectations it's concerned? Sure. So when I do an intake with a client, one of the questions that I ask is, imagine it's six, 12 months from now, what does success look like for you? And so that's kind of a key component because a lot of times we have this idea that, you know, we want to fix everything. I certainly do. I don't want to speak for other coaches. Um, but I think that as a coach, you generally are a bit empathic, you know, you want to help people and you can also sense the, the challenge or the pain that they're undergoing um, when they come to you. Generally speaking, when people seek out health coaching, they're not at a high point in their lives. That's been my experience, mm -hmm. you know, at least. So I would say that, you know, in the beginning is you really want to distill. And even if it seems like redundant, you really want to ask, like, what is it that you really want? And, and a lot of people don't know. That's the thing is that they think, oh, I want to fix everything. But that's not ever true, actually. Um, so, so really being specific on and aligning on what your, your goals are and kind of always revisiting them. Because that because, in, you know, a lot of times we'll lose sight. We'll say like, oh, well, if their goal is increased energy, and then, I don't know, they have a, a small issue with the CBO protocol, like the floor film disruptor or the biofilm disruptor is not, you know, going well with them. And then they get caught up in that or like that the sweet potatoes aren't enough, you know, so you just get lost in all these details, right? But then you ask them, oh, how's your energy? Oh, yeah, I feel like 30% better. Because now they actually have energy to complain about all these things when actually when they started out. They didn't have any energy. They were just completely wiped out, right? So they you know, probably couldn't even think straight enough to like yeah. receive some of the other things. Yeah. So 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 I think that's really important. And then also is the flip side where a lot of times, you know, you as a coach want them to do everything. You know, you uh, you know, you want them to do all the supplements, you want them to make sure that they're getting, you know, doing, you know, that their HRV is up, that their sleep is amazing, that um, I want to address their childhood trauma. Um, we want to rewire their minds, want to make sure that, you know, I don't know, like that maybe they're, you know, doing a lot of catabolic activities that they shouldn't be doing, but they really like them. And uh, so, so we want that all of it, right? But then for them, they may actually be impacted by like one or two things. So I'm going to give an example. So I had um, one client that was very challenging, a type one uh, diabetic, you know, history of anorexia. And she was very overweight. Her blood sugar was like, in the three or four hundreds every day, did like every single supplement I could think of, um, and you know, lifestyle intervention for balancing blood sugar. And after a few months, I said, Hey, like, you know, I think, you know, I don't think this is necessarily gonna work. It was the only client that I said, you know, I don't, I don't think I think you should go to somebody else because I've tried everything that I know, and I don't think it would be ethical for me to try other things. She was willing to continue and sign another, you know, three-month engagement. Um, but it was on my end that I said, I don't think we've gotten the results that um, I think that we should have gotten. And so I, I would like to refer you to someone else. And I 
was going to refer to her to somebody, another practitioner that I knew who was a type one diabetic themselves. And I thought might be beneficial. I did consult that person as I was creating the wellness plan for this, for, for this client. Um, and so this client responded by saying that, um, you know, actually, you know, they had a really good experience with me as a coach and they didn't realize the degree to which their low self-worth actually contributed to their wellness issues. We did a lot of inner child work, a lot of solar plexus focused healing, um, and did kind of, you know, a lot of holotropic breath work and things like that. And she, she knew about all of her phys physiological issues, but didn't realize the role that her emotional lack of emotional well-being played. Um, she came from a household where her mom was an alcoholic and very abusive and, you know, just didn't feel um, worthy or lovable at all as a person for, for many years, as long as she can remember. And, um, and for her, that was actually the most important thing, like beyond the nutrition advice the supplements. And she was like, actually, you've completely changed my perception towards myself and actually the root cause of what's going on. And I generally feel I'm on the right path, even though my CGM doesn't say so. Um, you know, I, I actually feel like in a much better place than I was when I started. And so here I am, I think that I kind of failed her on some level because we didn't get her blood sugar down significantly. She wasn't losing weight. Um, the only way that she can bounce her blood sugar is by eating like, you know, I don't know, like 800 calories a day of just vegetables. Um, but in actuality, this person was really impacted by one or two elements of the de-stress protocol, namely emotional balance and success mindset. For her, that was the game changer because you know this person had seen multiple practitioners at this point and multiple doctors, and they've probably all addressed like diet and exercise and maybe not toxins, but you know a lot of the the supplements and whatnot. So, um, so that was very impactful for me as a coach because I I had my expectations really kind of shaken up on some level because I thought I didn't do I, I didn't really do my job, but then you know, she thought had a completely different perspective. Yeah. So I'll stop there. But that was a long one. I have, I have more examples, but that's one. No, that's super interesting. And I mean, really amazing because it can kind of go both ways, right? Like your ex, mm -hmm. your expectation for the client was that like you fixed X, Y, and Z, right? But she, maybe the unintentional mm -hmm. consequence and the most value she got from it was something completely different, you know, versus maybe even her having large expectations and you mm -hmm. saying like, listen, this is the only thing we're going to work on here. So it can kind of go both ways. Yeah. I think honesty um, on your part of saying like, gee, you know, I don't really think what you could have done with signed her for another three month package, right. And kept working on her blood sugar. And it may never ever come out that she was actually noticing and feeling most impacted by the things that you were doing with her mindset and her childhood stuff, right? Had you not been honest and said, I don't really know if this is the best fit. I haven't really gotten you the results you're looking for. Why don't I refer you to, you know, my friend so-and-so, you may not have had the chance for that conversation. So I think like honesty also plays such a big role in this when it comes yeah. to like expectations and and the satisfaction on both ends, right? Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, I didn't, I never thought of it from that perspective. I really appreciate that. Um, that is a, that is a really helpful way to look at it. And, and then there's been like other clients, like that's like maybe more of a, a really particular case. Um, and then I've had another client where we didn't even set out to fix her sleep. Like she didn't actually state that as something she wanted to work on. It was more energy. But after we did 21 day functional medicine detox and you know, she always had a lot of um, resistance towards a lot of the supplements. She was like really sold on it. And then in particular, the full spectrum magnesium, she was like, oh, do I really need that? I've taken all these magnesiums before. They didn't do anything. So, uh, you know, it took like a few weeks, but I eventually got her on it. And then, uh, you know, so she does the 21 day functional medicine detox. And then the, and then she actually stopped, I believe. So we worked together for six months and then she stopped. Then I reached out and she's like, David, I don't need to work with you, but you know, that magnesium that you gave me just completely changed my sleep. I've never, I haven't slept through the night in about six years since I had my second child. And, um, you know, I think it was also, she mentioned the detox as well, because that certainly helps and the lower inflammation and she said something along the lines of like the aches and pains that I normally associated with aging and just being my age have virtually gone away. And now I can sleep through the night. I'm extremely indebted. And, you know, then we hopped on a call and just to catch up, but um, it was like just this one thing. And for me, I don't know, you know, there was all these other things I wanted her to do. And, 
you know, you know, she still barely exercises except to like go outside and she lives in England and, you know, we got her a light therapy lamp and all this stuff. And, uh, and, um, you know, I wanted to get her to do a sauna to improve circulation. She didn't do that. She didn't do like a million things that I asked her to do, but she did this one thing, which is take full spectrum magnesium every day and do a quarterly functional medicine detox. And she kind of does her smoothies uh, because she, she can't handle smoothies in the winter. Um, mm-hmm. So, so that was like one thing that I didn't think too much of because I incorporate full spectrum magnesium in many of my protocols. It's almost like a no brainer for, mm-hmm. for many people. Um, but that was like the most impactful thing she did. And so, yeah, it's like these little things, right? <laughs> right. Uh, and a lot of people like think that their issues, their ailments are just common. Yeah. And like all of her friends probably still don't sleep through the night since having their second child, right? So she didn't necessarily come to you seeking, you know, can you fix my sleep? Yeah. But in fixing that, you know, a little bit of better energy and magnesium, I mean, this, you know, the sleep probably helps fix the energy too. But it again, like if you had not reached out, right, your intention was like, hey, you know, just letting you know that, you know, still here if you need anything or whatnot, had you not opened that line of communication, you may never, never have heard from her again. No. And you may not have known the impact of just full spectrum magnesium and how well she was doing, right? Yeah. And the irony of health coaching, or this is my experience, is that when you do your job really well, people don't reach out. Like, it's just like silent, right? So like, it's, sometimes it's a good thing. Um, but, but it's always really nice to hear how people have been doing, um, and, and the impact that, that we've had as coaches. Um, yeah, those are, those are the two examples that come to mind right now, but I think it's very common, um, to have our own expectations and to make sure we align and kind of even ask the question like, Hey, what's impacted you the most? Um, that's something that I'm going to start doing, you know, even just halfway through protocols, like seeing what's landing with people. Um, because we recommend a lot. I mean, we talk about the de-stress protocol as coaches, but for us, it's very natural or it becomes natural as we slowly start to integrate everything. But it is a lot of lifestyle and, you know, mindset, physical interventions that we're asking people to do um, in a short period of time. So I'm really finding the thing that lands for everyone is, is really kind of, it's really important um, because not everyone's going to, you know, resonate with everything. And some things like people are going to ignore, like they may say, oh, like, you know, maybe it'll just be the, the sauna you recommend or doing the dry brushing or um, the daily nutritional support. Um, I've even had people ask, have a, have had, a, had one client ask me over text. She goes, is equal life addictive? Like she even asked me over text, like, you know, cause she was, um, <laughs> uh, she, 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 maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe I said, maybe, um, don't sign up for the text. I'm kidding. Um, but um, yeah, so she had, she did um, she was in two of my community detoxes, and then she became a client later on. But um, yeah, so so it's always different with people, and um, I, I think that we just need to let go of our expectations and really come from a place of curiosity and compassion. Like where you know these people are suffering, and you know just the way that most of us have, and they have their own lives and things that resonate with them, and you know supplements, you know that don't land with them that make them feel strange or things that, and so we need to like, at least I've had to learn to not take it personally. Like sometimes when I recommend things, I'm invested in it. And so really being able to be more um, of a vehicle, um, just kind of let whatever they're feeling kind of pass through me and kind of take that in and be more um, proactive in terms of, you know, finding a new solution for them. If like, let's say adrenal soothe doesn't work for them. They like some other ashwagandha brand or something, even if I don't, particularly like that company, but it works for them. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Um, so yeah. 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 Pivoting and keeping it individual, um, I think is huge. And you said, um, curiosity and compassion and like, let's face it, that's what most allopathic practitioners are missing, right? When somebody comes to us, they've usually exhausted, um, all kinds of other doctors, Mm -hmm. you know, practitioners, and oftentimes what makes, a health coach different is they do come from that that place of compassion and curiosity. And it's not kind of, all right, this is the one size fits all type of here's your prescription and go on your, your merry way. So yeah, I love that you said that too, because I think it's such a big component of, of the value of what we give clients. Yeah, absolutely. So it's really about the container um, in many ways, you know, the fact that, you know, I spend 60, 75 minutes in an intake and, 
you know, sometimes people just need to be heard. Cause I mean, at a very simple level, like my experience was, I was never actually heard by any doctor. Mm -hmm. Like I was told things were in my head or that it was just this or just that, um, go take this test that you have to wait three weeks for, you know, things like that. Um, Mm -hmm. so I think a lot of our role as healers and coaches is actually, you know, having, making people feel seen and heard in their experience. And, um, even if it's something along the lines of their, you know, reaction to an herb or something like that and being like, okay, that's your experience. It's valid. Um, let's, let's work with that. And sometimes they go, it goes away on their own. They may just not feel safe. Cause I mean, most people who have gone through conventional medicine or have gone through the healing journey for multiple years, it is a form of trauma in of itself. So there's a general, you know, nervous system dysregulation or a general lack of safety in your own body, which is um, a very, you know, challenging place to be in is to not feel safe in, in your vehicle, right? So, um, so, so that's something I try and keep in mind whenever I encounter a new client is that, you know, this is someone who most likely doesn't feel safe in their own body. And there's all sorts of, you know, you know, parts that can arise and, you know, just, you know, protective mechanisms. And, you know, we all, I think I, in our own respective journeys, we've all developed a certain degree of like neurosis or kind of paranoia um, of like, okay, I don't trust food. I don't trust this, this herb or where does it come from? And, and there's some validity to that because there are a lot of toxins out there and things we need to be careful about. Um, but it is a really challenging experience when like authorities, people that you're supposed to trust with your health really let you down. And I, and I think that as coaches, we're catching people downstream in their journeys most of the time, not always. I'm, I'm really happy that now I'm actually seeing younger and younger clients. So people are seeking health coaching at a much earlier point, um, even before they go to their conventional medical doctors, which is great. But the general you know, scenario is that people are get, catching us downstream. So, you know, there's a lot of, you know, emotional headwind and kind of, you know, difficulties that they've encountered um, that they've carried into this experience. So it's not as simple as their sleep or their um, nervous system or their energy. There's like all this kind of baggage that they're bringing into the container that we need to also address and heal. So, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And the easiest way to get someone to kind of feel even slightly safer in their own um, body is to kind of validate and see them for what they're experiencing. Mm -hmm. It typically usually deflates most people's um, highest level of, you know, kind of angst right away. So yeah, Yeah. you said that. So if someone's listening, which I'm sure many people are listening and thinking, where can we find out more? um, Could you share with us uh, where you show up on Instagram, your YouTube channel, your um, burnout program, all that? Yeah, so my website is, uh, the name of my practice is Moksha Life. So that's M-O-K-S-H-A Life. And then the website is mokshalife.co. My YouTube channel is just David Delgado, my name, David Delgado, Mind Body Healing. So you can find that there. My Instagram handle is uh, Moksha Life. So it's uh, Moksha double underscore life. And then TikTok is the same. So uh, and lastly, my brain fog and chronic fatigue course, which you can find on my website, which is mokshalife.co. And you click on the top where it says brain fog course, and you'll get an idea of, you know, what basically it's a step-by-step framework on how to create a personalized protocol for your specific flavor or type of brain fog and chronic fatigue. So you can definitely find that there. And of course, um, if you have questions about it, or you know, someone that could benefit from it that maybe can't. Um, afford to work one-on-one with a coach, it's a really good fit for them. I'm happy to talk to you one-on-one and you could just uh, book a call with me directly on the course landing page. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's great. Um, Thank you so much for being a guest on the Integrative Health Coach Success Podcast. This is such a wonderful interview and I appreciate you sharing all your wisdom. I think it was lots of invaluable information that coaches will be able to take into their practice. Definitely. Yeah. And I'm happy to any for anyone listening who who would uh, just want to dive deep into any particular thing that I mentioned, um, feel free to reach out to me. I'm always happy to talk and talk to new or experienced coaches or share. There's a lot of things that I've learned along the way um, that I'd be happy to to guide others so they don't make the same uh, mistakes. So yeah, well, thanks for having me, Julie. I really appreciate it. This has been fun. So we don't we haven't really gotten to I've seen you so much on Zooms and um, a little tiny bit during ISP Live. So it's been great to just to converse with you too. 
Yes, yeah, same here. Thanks so much for being here. We'll talk okay. soon. All right, bye. Bye.